One of the most useful things in physics and mathematics is the ability to rewrite functions as Taylor series representations. And we can do the same thing with complex functions. This is complex analysis by a physicist, and let's discuss Taylor's theorem in complex analysis. Taylor's theorem in complex analysis, or for complex functions, is more or less exactly the same as it is for real functions. The only thing is we need to make sure that our complex function is analytic throughout a disk, uh, mod z minus z naught, which is less than some radius, basically meaning it has to be finite. If that's the case, then we can rewrite that function as a Taylor series approximation. And I have this written out right here, and you'll notice this AN right here. For those of you that have taken a math methods and physics course, or maybe you cover this in a differential equations course, or even an applied mathematics course, you probably will know that we can pretty simply go ahead and just use a known Maclaurin series to rewrite uh, a number of functions. So we're going to go through and do three examples uh, where I'm just going to Taylor expand three complex functions and uh, we'll just go to town with it. The first function here we're just going to take a Maclaurin expansion of it so we're going to center it uh, for uh, at uh, z naught equals zero so just a, a Maclaurin series expansion and we can rewrite this function here using our exponent rules is just e to the z uh, and times e to the one or really just e and then pretty simply we can just rewrite this using our uh, you know our Taylor expansion for e to the z and just multiply an e all the way through so in reality we're gonna get an e times the sum n equals zero to infinity of z to the n on n factorial okay and if we expand this out and just get the first couple of terms if we expand this out and just get the first couple of terms you're going to get an e plus e z plus e e z squared on 2 factorial and this is just going to continue and this is going to converge for for mod z you know less than infinity okay and so so the uh this is this is a pretty simple way to represent this complex function as a taylor series here we have a geometric series and this is one that i notice a lot of people always end up overlooking but it's one of the most useful uh you know series uh, expansions that we can use so to do this, we're just going to factor out a one-fourth to get this into the proper form. So we're going to get a one-fourth uh, times uh, one on one minus z per four, okay? And then now we can just rewrite this again where we're going to have a one-fourth outside and then we're going to get a one plus z per 4, plus z per 4 quantity squared, plus so on and so on. And we can really just rewrite this then as 1 fourth is the sum uh, n equals 0 to infinity of z per 4 to the n, and we could really simplify this down even more by bringing this one fourth in, which is just going to give us the sum zero to infinity again. I mean, our bounds aren't changing at all, and we're just going to get a z to the n on four to the n plus one. All right, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But we're doing this for a Maclaurin series. I should have actually specified that at the beginning that this is for uh, at uh, z naught equals zero okay but let's do one now actually using the formula and we're going to center it at something different okay 
so I picked just a very simple function here, which is just sine of z, and it's because I don't want us to focus on altering or changing, um, you know, the function. We know, okay, we know right here that this is what our series expansion should look like, but now we're just centering it at z naught equals 1. So to do that, we're going to, you know, just have to use our formula. Okay, so initially, we're just going to evaluate this at z naught. So we're just going to get a sine of 1. Okay, and then we're going to add to that our first derivative, which is just cosine, and evaluate it at z naught again. So it's just cosine of 1, and then we're going to get a z minus 1. Remember that if our z naught term here is positive, it's going to be minus in here. And if this is negative, we're going to get a plus in here. Okay, so we're going to get z minus 1. And then added to that, we're going to get, uh, or actually subtracted from that, we're going to get back to sine, evaluated at 1 of z minus 1 squared on 2 factorial. And then this is just going to continue on and on. And this is how we get our, you know, this is how we use Taylor's theorem in complex analysis. It's very simple, very straightforward. Um, I should mention, going back to this one, that, you know, obviously there's a discontinuity here. But for any z less than 4, okay, we're going to be all good to go, okay? So this actually is analytic inside, you know, mod z equals, uh, or less than mod, mod z less than 4, okay? And so we really just need to make sure, again, that we're looking at where these functions are analytic about a disk, make sure that they're finite, make sure that they're converging, and, and and this is really simple and straightforward. It doesn't change all that much from real functions. So, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And thank you very much for watching. These videos are supported by viewers like you and your viewership. So, thank you just simply for viewing. By viewing the video, you're supporting the video, me, my channel, and my work. And so, I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you again next time.